Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. Welcome to this Monday. It is an awesome day. We're already starting out the week in power, and this is the last day of the fast. Are you not super excited? It is going to be an awesome day. Amen. Well, this is the thing, okay? This is the thing, and actually, for the next 24 hours into tomorrow is the last bit of the fast. So, this is the thing. Oh my goodness. Hey, Katie Higoma, I think that's Donna. I think that's you, Donna. Yeah, it is. Thank y'all for joining in. I see Barbara Voigt. <coughs> Thank you for joining in. God bless you. Thank you, Katie. And I see, I think that's Jacqueline. Or, hold on, let me get my glasses because I cannot see. That, yeah, Donna. Thank you, Donna. God bless you. Well, this is the thing, okay? I have, and you'll, you'll see in this book, the reason that God has had me write this book. Well, first and foremost, it's for His glory, and it's to bring the truth, to bring freedom to those who are reading it. And what is absolutely amazing is all the deliverances that I've had through life, especially in the early 2000s, that's when I really started experiencing some massive deliverances in the Word and Power and Holy Spirit coming to my temple as an all-consuming fire with a baptism of Holy Spirit and fire with truth. And when that power of truth hits your members, you're set free. Amen. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And so, one of the things the devil hates, and believe you me, if the devil hates something, I absolutely love it. I don't like him glad. I like him mad. I love the devil mad. Amen. That's when you know that you're doing work for the kingdom. And one of the graces that I walk in is the word in power and deliverance. And I love the deliverance, John 8, 32. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And so when you know the truth, the devil is called out. He's called out literally, okay? He's called out, cast out, sent to the wilderness which is where he needs to stay in Jesus name until the day of judgment when Jesus deals with all those demons. Amen. And so one of the things that I walk in in great power and anointing is deliverance and exposing demons, exposing them. When God tells me to call a demon out, I call it out. And a lot of people don't understand that life because first and foremost, Everybody's anointing is different. Your anointing is different from my anointing. And just because I do something doesn't mean it's off. It just means I know my anointing. And that's why I'm crazy enough to do all the radical stuff that I do and I'm willing to be persecuted for people who don't like it and who do not understand and who do not like me calling out the devil. And it's because maybe the devil is oppressing them, most likely. And so they don't like me calling out the devil. They would just like it if I am just quiet and I don't say anything and I just pity pat with people being oppressed and you being oppressed with the devil and I don't call it out. Wrong. You mess with the wrong woman. Oh, devil, you will be called out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ because I am not, I am unafraid of you. I am only afraid of he that can cast my soul into hell. That's who I'm afraid of, God. I'm not afraid of the devil. I'm not afraid of mankind. I'm afraid of God. The worshipful fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. It's also the beginning of wisdom. That's what Proverbs says about two things. It says it's the beginning of knowledge. It's the beginning of wisdom. Amen. And so one of the things I do very well is call the devil out. I'm not shy. I'm unashamed. I won't be held back. I will sound the alarm. My, my maiden name, everybody knows, Robin Mead Ward. Ward means watchman. Mead means reward, which means rear guard. And it's used in the book of Joshua. When you look at chapters five through six, you see the rear guard is actually called reward in the King James Version. And that's what Mead means. And listen, I won't shut up. I will not. I refuse to shut up when I've been set free. And so this is one of the things that we're gonna look at today and the power of what's going on in your mind and body connection 
and how Holy Spirit comes to set you free. One of the things that I know well, well, some of the things that I know well, is the attack of Jezebel, Leviathan, and Python, which is also called divination. Python is also known as divination. I've written extensive notes. I don't go looking for devils, but when God exposes them by the spirit of the gift of discerning of spirits, you better believe it. I'm going to sound the alarm. And the reason I'm going to sound the alarm is because people need to wake up to the attacks of the enemy and the fact that they're being oppressed. So God wants me to bring a few things to your person to let you know so that it can be wisdom for you in order that you have discernment. Remember the truth brings discernment. The word of truth brings discernment. It is your discernment and you're gonna find out in the new book that truth brings discernment. And so let me just go through a few things in order to give you wisdom, amen? And so one of the things the spirit of Jezebel does, and I have Jezebel notes, and you know what, I'm so glad I'm talking about this because I just want to irk the devil. I just want to tick him off. How many of y'all like to tick the devil off? I like to, and I feel like having a barbecue today. And so one of the things that the spirit of Jezebel does is it counterfeits the presence of God, the tangible presence. And you feel something and it's manipulation. It's control to make you bow down and to make you think that <clears throat> you're insufficient, that you're not good enough, and that you always have to have someone else telling you what to do. And let me tell you what, that spirit really attacks your mind. It has what I would call a mind grip, a device around your mind, and it makes you feel like you can't function, like you can't think for yourself. <clears throat> That's what that spirit does. And it just wants to attack you and to make you feel bent over and to bow down to that spirit. If you feel your shoulders slumping, if you feel that you're totally insufficient and that you always have to go to one person to make yourself feel good. Now, it doesn't mean necessarily that that person is a Jezebel spirit, but it means that a Jezebel spirit is controlling you okay, and making you feel insufficient, deficient, and you will always <clears throat> defer to, uh, to another person. That is that spirit. You have to speak the word of truth and cut the cords of that spirit, and it's literally like tentacles coming out of your spine. That's what it feels like, and I'll get into that in my notes. I physically felt this spirit. And it was like tentacles coming out of my spine and my body was thrown once it came out. <clears throat> and I felt from the top of my spine to the bottom of my spine, like my back opening six inches. And I audibly heard and physically felt these three tentacles come out of my back slurping like that. And then the power of Holy Spirit filled me and I felt the anointing. And I said, God, what just happened? And he said, that was that spirit sucking the life out of you. Now the Spirit of Python divination, it's very appropriate to call it divination, and I've written notes on it, divi, to divide, nation, to divide people. And remember, nation in Hebrew means people, to divide people. And so its whole tactic is to make you look bad, to get people paranoid against one another, and to divide, bring divisiveness, bring division among you. And I think I hate that spirit out of all three of them more than any because it is so cunning. It always tries to hide under the person that's trying to look so spiritual, but they actually have more wounds. They have usually some form of disassociation in their person, dissociative disorder, or kind of like multiple personality disorder. They have some form of that and their whole purpose, and it's the wounds within them that's trying to divide people and their whole purpose is to make everybody else look bad except for themselves. And again, some of them are unconscious to it, subconscious to it, and that's why you have to pray for those that are operating in the spirit. But let me tell you what, you cut that thing off. You get that thing away from you because it will put cords in your belly and it will try to manipulate you and control you and to make you think that they are the only person that you can go to 
in order to trust anybody. And that is not that spirit. Now, again, it might not be operating through another person, but it might be in your belly and it might just have you so bound up that you think that you can only go to one person to get truth. And that is the lie from the pit of hell. You go to God and God alone to get truth. Now you can surround yourself with a multitude of counselors, but you go to God and God alone to get truth. Now let's deal with Leviathan. Ah, oh yeah, know that one well. It operates in a group, especially a group with someone that's given over to its devices. It will have dreams. It will have uh, messages, because remember that, that that assignment operates through messages. And so it will do that and its whole purpose is to really bring such a message that is potent to really influence you, to influence you that get this, God just spoke to you and he just pointed out the error in someone else when in reality, it wasn't God that spoke to you, but because of your pride, it was the spirit of Leviathan that came to give you a message. And because you've yielded your members over to witchcraft, to rebellion, Leviathan can give you a message, a dream, and you will think that you have heard God. Now this spirit, it's cunning and I've written six notes on it. Oh yeah, I'm gonna talk about devils today. We're gonna like, I think about major pain kicking behind is my business and business is good. Oh yeah, casting out devils is my business to expose the works of darkness and business is good today in Jesus name because I'm exposing the works of darkness. And so the spirit of Leviathan, it is so cunning. It is going to make you think that you have heard from God. It is going to give you dreams. It is going to speak to you through others that have also heard from the Lord. And they think that the other person is so bad. Now I've had this happen against my person and God warned me and I shared the dreams where God exposed the spirit of Leviathan operating through a group that persecuted me really bad. They all really thought they were hearing God, but pride was operating in their members and they actually were not hearing God and they were coming against the anointing. And that's what Leviathan does is pride in others will come against the anointing and it will speak bad of you. This is why you have to use discernment. You have to keep your circle small if people are not willing to get delivered because I have experienced this from just different people in my life, especially being a minister, where they would just speak against me and they would just come against me when all I have done is pour into their life. That's all I've done is I've poured into their life. And yet the enemy through pride gets them to covet my anointing, and that's the other thing with Leviathan, it gets people to coveting your anointing, coveting your husband, coveting your children, coveting your, your call, coveting your, uh, what you walk in. That's what it does. It gets other people that are in pride wishing they were like you. And that is the first sign. Let me tell you what saints, I'm telling you, this is an hour you have to Isaiah 27, one, see the Lord and she, the sword of the Lord. That's different than the sword of the spirit. When the sword of the Lord comes out, oh my goodness, it is business. And so he slays Leviathan, the king of glory, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Psalm 74, 13 and 14, God cuts off the heads of the dragon, the messages of Leviathan that are speaking to other people against you. He cuts their heads off. And then verse 14, he cuts up Leviathan in the wilderness and he feeds him to the creatures in the wilderness. Now, this is the thing, saints of God. Some of you are fighting devils that I've mentioned and you're dealing with them. And Satan doesn't want me to talk about them. 
He doesn't want me to talk about them. You know what? I'm going to start talking about them even more. I don't talk about them as often, but I'm going to talk about them more because I'm going to expose the works of darkness to the light. Now, saints of God, some of you are dealing with some of those demonic oppressions that I just mentioned. And this is what I would tell you to do from my experience that God has given me. Fast and pray. And in that fasting and praying, repent. Read Psalm 51, and he will show you the works of iniquity in your own heart in order to bring to light the root system that that attack of the enemy can come and attack your person. So assess, examine, and look at where, where you are right now and think about and consider any of these attacks that might be coming against you. And oh my, when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, the Spirit of truth, the Spirit of wisdom, you will rise up in the boldness of the faith and the righteousness of Christ Jesus, and you will be set free. Amen. So you have a blessed day, an awesome week, and I'll see you tomorrow. God bless.